getting fired on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by GetResponse. Are you a small business owner, professional blogger, or a marketing agency? GetResponse can help you connect with your audience in a meaningful way. To see how GetResponse can help your business and get your first month free, go to servenomaster.com backslash GetResponse. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. This morning I went outside to record today's episode and unfortunately it was pouring rain. So I had to wait until the second time of the day when it's a little bit quiet and it's just after sunset and the tide is coming in like a monster. I would love to record inside the house, but my girlfriend's sick, my kid is making a lot of noise, my son's making a lot of noise, my daughter's downstairs making a lot of noise. So we're outside together. You're gonna hear a little bit of ocean sounds. I will try to <laughs> minimize them. Hopefully I'll be able to go back into the house after this recording because the tide is definitely coming in. I'm definitely gonna have to walk through water to get home. It's already more than a foot past the bottom of the dock. But today I wanna to talk about something really important. We're so afraid when we work for another company of getting fired, we have this fear. And this boils down to a very simple fear that we all have. I can't handle it if X happens. There's this amazing book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyways, which I really love. And she talks about how that's the core of everything we're afraid of. We're afraid we can't handle when something bad happens. When I was learning how to be a DJ, I used to travel the world DJing in different clubs. I even had a radio show in London for a little while. There were all these different emergencies that I was afraid of. But once they happened, I discovered I could handle them. I was one time playing in a club that was wired so poorly, the power went out to the entire building. I was playing in a small club, a small bar in Japan, and a girl smelled a drink on one of the turntables, had to turn it off and continue music going with only one turntable. I've shown up for a job DJing in Bristol in England and my headphones weren't in the bag and there were no headphones in the club. So I had to put my ear down next to the record to hear the tiniest of the vibrations as the needle went over the record to try and match the sounds. Every bad situation you can imagine happening, everything I'd ever thought of eventually happened. And once it's happened once, you're not afraid of it anymore. Fear of getting fired is the same thing. We're afraid I can't handle it. I won't know what to do. I won't be able to make enough money to support my family. I won't be able to handle it. Things will fall apart, but it's not true. Getting fired was the worst moment of my life, but also the best. Looking back and in my book, I talk about how that was the moment my life began to be amazing, but I didn't know at that moment. I had no idea that I would succeed online. In that moment, all I knew was that my career as a teacher was over. I would never be able to teach again. And that's not really true. I never wanted to teach again. If I wanted to go and teach somewhere else, I certainly could have, because I hadn't actually done anything wrong. And in fact, I could have sued the university, taken them to court and fought to save my job and I would have won. Their reason for firing me from a university position was that they accused me of running a separate business. They said, oh, you're not allowed to run a private business. And I said, what do you mean? They said, well, you wrote a book. I said, so you're firing me as a teacher at a university for writing a book. I know, because I've been to university, I know other teachers at university, every teacher at university writes books and most of them try to force their students to buy it. I at least wasn't doing that. So if we'd gone to court, I would have won because their argument was both illegal and irrational. You cannot fire a teacher for also being an author. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And there was no competition and no relation. I hadn't sold a book in a long time. I'd written the book and published it, but who cares? In that moment, when they fired me, they freed me. If they'd waited another two weeks, one of the federal programs for health insurance would have changed. Obama passed a short-term law that says if you get fired, you only have to pay a third the price for health insurance for the next 18 months. So I was able to afford very, very high-end health insurance that I wouldn't have been able to afford any other way. And I actually ended up having a medical problem later that year where I went to an emergency room, had a problem with my heart, and that insurance saved my life. If they'd waited two more weeks to fire me, it wouldn't have worked out. Now, when you buy a car, sign a lease on an apartment, and then you get fired the next day, it doesn't feel very good, it's very scary. I had no choice but to build a business and make things happen. 
when you have no choice, you'll do whatever it takes. You'll discover when you get fired that you're capable of things you never imagined before. All the leverage that your employer has over you is perception. The only reason you stay with your boss is that you think you can't make the same money somewhere else. Otherwise, nobody would stay. No one would stay working for a job they're dissatisfied with, working for someone else, if they didn't think they couldn't do it on their own. And it's this fear that's used to control our society, and it's one of the biggest chains that I talk about breaking and Serve No Master. We're so afraid of losing our jobs that we forget what we're capable of. I discovered I'm capable of writing books that sell millions of dollars in copies around the world, hundreds of thousands of copies, book after book after book. I discovered I'm capable of starting my own business, of building my own website, of designing my own business, of starting a successful podcast, of writing books that people love to read and write me the sweetest and most amazing letters to connect with me. It turns out that I'm capable of things that I never imagined before. And it makes me feel very good. I would never have started this business if I hadn't been fired. Fear always held me back. I was always afraid of starting my own business. I always thought it's something that other people do and I could never really do it. Even though looking back, I started six or seven businesses along the way. When I was in university doing my master's, I started my own tutoring business that did pretty well. I built a little website, I got a lot of business, all from the sweat of my own brow. While the people around me were taking jobs working in bars, I was making four or five times more money because I started a little tutoring business. And I found really high-end clients just by putting in the effort. I ended up teaching in London at very, very high-end companies. And so I taught and worked with one of the top 100 companies in the world because of this little website, because I put in a little effort. But I never really felt like I could give up working for someone else and totally start my own business. So for many of us, the fear holds us back, but getting fired frees us. You have in front of you, you have access to an entire business plan, every step from A to Z to go from zero to hero. However much money you need to make, you can build your own business digitally, needing no startup capital, and hit those numbers. You can build something from nothing. You know how to do it because I'm here with you. I've created a plan in front of you. Whether you decide to go the path of building a blog and becoming a successful blogger, whether you kind of become an affiliate marketer or start your own SEO company, whether you decide to become an author and follow my path down the Kindle path, whatever it takes, getting fired simply gives you more time to work on it. When you stop having the fear, you become powerful in a way you never imagined before. All of those conversations where you're talking to your boss and you want to raise but you're afraid to ask for it, suddenly you ask for what you're worth because you know you can make it somewhere else. Confidence changes, the leverage in the relationships change. You don't have to quit your job. Not everyone is designed to do what I do. It's totally fine to use some of my systems to get raises, to build yourself at work, to get that promotion, to change to another job, or simply to build up some side revenue streams. All of those are absolutely fine things to do. I don't demand that every single person work for themselves. I have more than a few people who work for me. Some people don't want to have all the responsibility, all of the fear. See, when you run your own company, there's some good things. You reap all the rewards, but there's some bad things. It's all on you. If there's no money, it's your fault. If there's no one to save you, there's no one to blame. If I don't have enough money to pay the rent at the end of the month, I can't blame my boss, I can't blame anyone else, I can't blame the company, it's me. I didn't work hard enough, I didn't make the right decisions. It's a great deal of responsibility, but it also weighs very heavy sometimes. The hardest part about getting fired is how it makes you feel. To have someone judge the totality of your worth and say you're unworthy, you're garbage, you're not good enough, it hurts, it hurts emotionally. And that's one of the things we really shy away from. As humans, we hate rejection, we hate being told we're not good enough. And some of us stay at jobs that we don't belong in or stay there too long doing the wrong thing all because we crave someone's approval. At my last job teaching at the university after taxes, I was making $2,200 a month. Right now, the thought of trying to live on that little money it makes me cringe. I couldn't imagine making that little a month. I just can't even imagine it, and yet back then, that's what I was willing to accept. I negotiated my, negotiated my way up to $36,000 a year, which of course the government took a big whack at taxes and left me with just two thirds of that at the end of every month. It's not enough for me, it's not enough for the way I want to live, it's not enough for you, you deserve more. You deserve a lot more, and I want to help you get there. We can make so much more money working for ourselves, even with a moderate level of success. 
even with just a little bit of effort, as long as you follow the pattern, you can build something really amazing. And that feeling, that need for approval from other people, it comes and goes with all of us. I sometimes form relationships with other people where I'm tempted to fall into that pattern of approval seeking. And you just notice it. I notice it developing and I shut it down because it's crazy. Anything you want to accomplish, you're capable of. And I really want you to take that home as the lesson for today that as much as I have episodes that are very technical, some episodes are about getting reviews for books or designing the perfect cover or building this type of business and that type of business, that stuff is only a small part of the plan. The truth is probably 90% of the courses about how to make money online work. The problem is not that the courses don't work. The problem is implementation. The problem is that most people give up too soon. Most people only finish 10%, 50%, 80% of the course, they get distracted. I'm just as guilty of this. I'm always trying to learn new things. I just went through a course recently to get better at a certain type of advertising. And so this weekend, to take it to the next level, I started going through a Facebook advertising course to really learn and master Facebook advertising, which, as I've mentioned in the past, I've always shied away from. My Facebook ads account has been frozen since 2013. I just reopened it on Sunday. I had to send in a picture of my passport, my American driver's license, my driver's license here, and my foreigner card here. Four different pieces of ID I sent in, and they reactivated the account because they were like, we're not sure it's really you. And I said, no problem. Let me just send in a host of ID. I hadn't done it for years because it held me back. But I haven't watched any of the training videos now in three or four days because so many other things were happening. And I started a course two months ago or six weeks ago about guest blogging because I wanted to learn that. I always can learn more. The idea that Someone like me is done learning is completely wrong. I want to be totally transparent with you. I'm always trying to learn and grow my business. I'm always trying to learn new techniques, new methods. And in fact, I learned something today, earlier today. I read it in a little tiny freebie. I was going through this report. I always read every product I can find about Kindle. I'm always looking for other courses on Kindle to see if there's anything I don't know about. And this thing costs $7. And I thought, this is going to be garbage, but I'll just grab it just in case. I knew 90% of it, and then at the very bottom, they had this little technique that I'd never heard of and didn't know about, and it blew my mind. It changed the whole game for me. It's going to increase my reads by a nice percentage. I'm really excited about it, and eventually I'll start teaching on it once I've tested it and tested it. But I find new information, not just through my own innovation, but also through studying other people's material, through learning from other courses. I'm constantly trying to learn, constantly trying to improve because I'm not great at everything. That's such a misnomer and a false thing. And people that pretend they know everything, I never trust them because it's impossible. There's too much to know. There's millions of things to know. The only companies that have courses on dozens and dozens of ways of making money online have 50 or 60 or 70 employees. I only know about seven or eight ways to make money online that I've done effectively. So that's what I teach about. I stick to what I know. All of these fears, all of these ideas that you can't make it on your own are totally wrong. Business comes down to a very simple principle. Your boss pays you more money than you generate. Wait, (laughs) that's backwards. Your boss pays you less money than you generate. If you generated for your company $1,000 a month, they would never pay you $1,100 a month. They would be taking a loss. Businesses don't operate that way. One of my friends, very successful at a company, makes high six figures, but he generates deep seven figures for the company. He probably gets paid 10% of what he generates. He helped build a company from two people to 50. He gets paid a lot, but nothing like he, the boss gets paid, nothing like the owner makes. Right now I'm dealing with a situation with one of my employees. I'm probably gonna have to let her go. I've run her through multiple tasks because I hate firing people. I hate running people through that. I had her writing blog posts for me while I tried to have her writing emails. She wasn't able to do it. I had to hire someone else. Then I had to, I tried to hire her to help edit these podcasts. She couldn't do it. She made tons of mistakes. There were a lot of problems with the files. She was much slower than if I was doing it on my own. So I hired someone else. So I keep hiring other people to do the tasks that she's incapable of doing. And I don't enjoy it. I don't want to make someone feel like nothing because I know she depends on the salary. But at the same time, she's never done a good job. Her job was to write 15 blog posts a week. At best, I would get nine or 12 if I'm really, really, really lucky. And there's always excuses. There's always stories. Either she's the most unlucky person in the world or there's something else going on. Last week, she got robbed. Yesterday, she fell on a flight of stairs. A few weeks ago, someone in her family died. Then a week before that, there's an explosion, then a fire. It's always a different horrific story that statistically 
it seems impossible that all of these things be happening to the same person all in the course of five or six weeks. But it's tough because I don't want someone to feel like they're garbage. But you're caught in that balance as a boss where her work is no longer generating more than what it costs to pay her. And that's the decision calculus you make as a boss. I try to set reward schemes in front of my employees so that when they work harder, when they deliver, they make more money. And I would have certainly been happy to do this for her, but constant undelivery puts me in a tough situation. When she does write the blog posts for me, she does a good job. She doesn't write for Serve No Master. She writes for my pen name, so I don't have to spend a lot of time growing those. I don't have enough time to grow all of my pen names, but unfortunately, that's all she does. It's not enough. She doesn't do the total number of tasks. And really, all those websites are filled out. Now they've all got 20, 25 blog posts. That's enough for a small little presence for someone who's got three, four, five books. You can survive on your own. You can build a business on your own. And part of the principle, part of what we're developing here, part of what we're building, and part of what you get from all the free material from these free episodes of this podcast, the free blog post, all the free content on my website, all of it is designed to help you protect your family from price shocks, from economic shocks. The economy right now in America is not good. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of people that are unemployed. There's a lot of economic problems. You see these huge companies disappear right now. And I know I'm dating this episode suddenly. Twitter is probably going to get sold. Now, I saw this coming six months ago. And in fact, I was pretty sure Twitter was going to go out of business a year ago. And that's one of the reasons you may have noticed I've said a few times I'm not a big Twitter guy. I saw the writing on the wall. I know exactly why that company is failing. And I'm not surprised at all. They made a few very poor decisions. Same thing with MySpace 15 years ago. Anyone looking at MySpace knew the, knew the website was going to die about a year before they did. If you're as old as me and you're a MySpace user, you noticed that first your profile was 100% you, then it was 10% ads. By the time MySpace died, it was almost 70% ads on the page. No one would accept that. They got so greedy, they destroyed the product. Now, Facebook does the same dance. They put more ads, then they lower the number, then they raise it. They're always dancing around to see how far they can push it. And they're constantly trying to fight against the technology to ad block. I use an ad blocker. Unfortunately, there's been a recent update. Facebook found a new way about my current ad blocker. So suddenly the ads are showing up again. I hadn't seen ads on Facebook in three or four years. I was shocked. I don't use the platform very much, but even when you work at these big companies, even if you work at a massive company like Yahoo, everyone from Yahoo is about to get canned. I saw the writing on the wall for Yahoo a while ago as well. If you follow these companies a little bit, you can see these tech companies make these massive acquisitions. Yahoo bought Tumblr for a billion dollars. Tumblr doesn't make any money. You can't buy a company that makes no money for a billion dollars and not destroy your own company. And that's what happened. These businesses, right? All the people who were working at Yahoo weren't making mistakes. They didn't do anything wrong. The CEO destroyed the company. But guess what? Those people are still fired. So rather than being afraid of getting fired, you want to take action and set up firewalls to prepare yourself for that time. You want to start putting books on Amazon under a pen name. You want to start building out a plan to go into consulting if you need to. Set up a consulting website. Even if you don't make it live, if you lose your job, you can flip the switch and suddenly it's active. Setting up these other things can prepare you for those moments. My last doctor in America got fired. I didn't even know doctors could get fired. This was an interesting experience. My last doctor in America was awesome. One of the best doctors I've ever had. I've been through a lot of doctors because I travel all the time. He was just my GP, just my general practitioner, my regular doctor that I would go to. I used to get sick a lot. I used to get pneumonia a lot. He was a great doctor and then they wanted him to, I can't remember exactly what they did, but they wanted him to change the pay structure or do something else. And he said, no way, I'm not into that. I'm not, you know, I'm not playing one of those games. Because I guess doctors don't totally work for themselves. Either way, they gave him the boot and he was like, I can't tell you exactly where I'm gonna be working, but you can Google this to try and find me. I was like, I was moving away anyways. This is right before I was leaving the country. In fact, the last time I went to any doctors about two weeks before I started traveling full time. He didn't have a full transition strategy. Now, as one of his patients, I would not go back to the same place and change doctors. I'm not into that. I don't go to doctors based on the location. I go to doctors based on the doctor. Once I develop that relationship, I want to maintain it. But even as a doctor, you want to be ready for that transition. And if he had had his own separate way to communicate with me, right? If he had set up you know, a website I was familiar with, he was like, hey, whenever you have any questions, just go to this website. 
This is where I write about different stuff. This is where you can find my information, you know, hisname.com or whatever. Then he could move to another hospital and I would still be able to find him quite easily. He could have formed a relationship with me separate from the hospital, which I would have gladly done. He was a great doctor. We really connected. He really knew what was going on and he was just a great doctor to work with, to be honest with you. So whatever profession you're in, things are going to happen. Things can happen and you want to prepare for those moments. Once you're prepared, you're no longer afraid of it happening. Having been fired when I was in massive debt, I'm no longer afraid of anything. I'm no longer afraid of anything financial. I don't have those fears. My girlfriend sometimes gets really worried about money because for her, she's still not used to my ability to generate. We've been together for a while, but she comes from like TV commercial poverty. She comes from fighting animals for food as a child to survive. Her experiences from childhood are so horrible, they don't sound like true stories. It's not my place to share her private life story, but she doesn't have the level of confidence in my ability to make money that I have because for her, she can't see my business. She can't fully see everything. She doesn't watch the computer all day and see the things I do. She just sees when I move money into the account and we take care of the family. Now, we've never had a problem with money. We've never been late for rent or not have enough food or not been able to take care of the kids. But confidence often comes from deep knowledge. My confidence comes from seven years of success. She's not fully there yet. In fact, just the other day, I said, baby, we're in trouble. We don't have money to pay for rent this month. And she freaked out. She didn't realize I was joking. Unfortunately, that's how I know. These jokes don't hit because she's not there yet. And she'll get there eventually. You know, as we are together longer and longer. For me, we're together forever. Like, it's just, that's it. I can't imagine ever changing my situation. I don't even think about it. There's no point for me. For me, the single part of my life is simply finished. So I don't think about that stuff. I can't imagine that transition back. But she still has that fear, and it's just going to take time and experience together, and eventually her confidence will continue to rise. It's definitely been stronger and stronger. But you can take control of your destiny. See, she can't control our finances. She doesn't know how to do stuff online. She's very busy taking care of our kids, full-time job. I mean, my kids are a maniac. My son is always making trouble. My son is the reason, <laughs> my six-month-old son is the reason I'm standing out here on a dock watching the water roll in, recording this podcast rather than inside of my little studio because he talks as, as, loud as, as loud as he wants to be. He's really loud and not crying, but talking. He's just always making really loud noises as a baby. She takes care of all of that. We have a great partnership, but we go through these fears. We have these fears because we don't have a plan for if it happens. If you start to develop a plan now, those fears will diminish. And when you start making real money from online, before you need to, you'll feel confident. But I can tell you right now, with the knowledge I have, with all the stuff I give away on my website, because I talk to people all the time. I do a lot of phone calls, a lot of consults, and I talk to people, and sometimes people, they're in bad financial situation. They can never afford to buy one of my courses, or they'd have to borrow money from someone. I have enough free material on my website so that you can start from zero and build a business with no money. You can make your first $100 and use that to make your next 1000 use that to make 10000 I've built this website to help real people. I don't depend on the money from Serve No Master to support my family. That allows me to give you really amazing information, to really give away everything in these podcasts, these blog posts. Now, yes, I do have courses. Yes, I do have more advanced courses. But you can make money from the free stuff in order to eventually buy one of the better courses. You don't have to spend from debt ever. I don't believe in that. So even if you lost your job tomorrow, if you said, I'm fired, I don't know what to do, you could sit down and start banging through my podcast episodes, these little inspirational knowledge bites, find the right path for you, and start making money within a month, start making real money within a month. You'd be okay. So you already have phase one of your emergency plan. Me, I'm there for you. I answer every email I get. I talk to people on the phone all the time. I give a lot of my own personal time. I help people all the time. I have a lot of interns that I work with to help them build their own businesses and work on projects together so they can see a project from the inside. I'm always giving of myself because my dreams have come true. I'm sitting out here on the dock and it's actually after dark now. Usually I record in the morning, but it's well after dark. The water's pitch black and all I can see are boats and palm trees and just beautiful water rolling in. My dreams have come true and I want to share that. I'm a big believer in that. And I know there's amazing things in front of you. So let go of that fear of being fired. You don't have to worry about that. Because if it happens, you'll probably discover just like I did, 
but they didn't fire you, they freed you from prison. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Serve No Master podcast. To find out how you can get a free copy of my new book, head over to servenomaster.com backslash podcasts right now.